All right, I'm gonna do something interesting here. And basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like kind of like a blitzcrank commentary kind of thing. And I'm not streaming this, but I am recording it, and I'm gonna upload it to YouTube. And just hopefully, I just kind of get like my thoughts on pretty much my most played support. I think almost this season, at least into the season eight season, uh, it's helped me get back to plat. Uh, thank God, but. Uh, it's definitely very helpful and you can play it into a mini a matchup and I'm starting to favor it more and more, uh, especially since I got the new skins. Maybe that's kind of why I'm biased, but uh, I kind of wanted to just talk about my main man, Blitzcrank. I have not done a Blitzcrank commentary. Previously I did Gragas and Xerath, but that was back in like uh, last year almost. Not like a full year, but it was a couple months ago. Uh, so I just wanted to do a Blitzcrank commentary slash kind of my input on Blitzcrank and why I've been playing him so much recently even though my mastery score with all these three guys is higher. Uh, I just wanted to go over Blitzcrank. So let's talk about Blitzcrank and some matchups before we actually get into a game. And I'll go through champ select and kind of my thoughts on the champ select as a whole. Hopefully it's not too toxic. We could lose this game too. And if we lose, uh, it's going to be pretty sad. But hopefully we can just get the win and I can explain what my thoughts are when playing Blitzcrank. Because when I previously did commentaries, I reviewed a video that was a replay rather than actually making a new one. So hopefully I can... Um, just do one in the current time that makes it so I can uh, talk about what my thoughts are when play. Uh, excuse me, when playing rather than just oh you should have done this or in hindsight this is what I would do. It helps more if I'm just like here's what I'm thinking now. Here's what I gotta do. This is why I did this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's talk about Blitzcrank and some matchups things first. Uh, just a brief oversight of what Blitzcrank does. Um, as you can see, crowd control is pretty high. Uh, three out of whatever three, whatever Riot says. And his difficulty is a one. I disagree with the difficulty grading already. I would give him probably a two. Um, probably a little above average in terms of... He's not easy. Uh, he has one key ability to use, but you can use it incorrectly, unlike a lot of other abilities. So hooking somebody is not always good, um, unlike a lot of other CC stuff. So it's not just hooking or like say like Malachi roots somebody generally speaking rooting somebody is probably going to be a good thing whether or not you're rooting the right guy blitz not only can you root the you can pull the wrong guy but pulling the wrong person at the wrong time can lose you a fight and it's not just like okay well obviously don't pull tanks or don't pull tanky supports that I can gauge no it's pretty it's a little more complicated than that like see pulling like Cassiopeia or Karthus or something like that normally mages that you want to just pull or pulling, um, I've even had like sometimes Zayas or some shit, like pulling people that um, can like have AoE abilities or something like that or can burst your team. Like Zaya, I've had like alt right after because uh, my team didn't jump her right away. Granted, that shouldn't happen, but you get what I'm saying. There, there can be moments where just pulling somebody or pulling a carry is just not always the correct move. Uh, it requires a lot of setup and stuff. Um, so I would rate him a 2. I disagree with his champion difficulty already. Uh, even though two of his abilities are basically worthless in terms of how and when to use them. I'll go over those two specifically. But his ult actually takes uh, burst damage. But you can also silence channels with it too. So it's not like just so... It's not completely brain dead like most people probably think about Blitzcrank. And you can 1v1 with it instead of um, bursting it. You can actually, if you are in a long 1v1, you can hold it. And the lightning does damage over time. I'll talk about it once more. I get over there. So, yeah, he's, uh, again, he's mostly, ma all of his abilities do magic damage, but his, he actually can build off attack speed. You're not really damaging with Blitzcrank. They pretty much killed any chance of him doing any damage in terms of, like, attack speed or, like, a bruiser besides support. So, uh, at most, you're going to get some uh, magic burst, which he has a lot of burst, to be fair. Uh, toughness is pretty average right here, but uh, mobility, I'd actually, yeah, probably, like, a one. Because he actually slows himself down and utility. I guess utility is a zero too. Like, what the fuck is wrong? What does Blitzcrank do, I guess? I don't know. We'll go over the abilities and then we'll see if we can kind of rectify it. So, I'll go over this ability last because this is his ultimate. I know it's not on his ultimate key, which is R, but his Q might as well be his ultimate. His pool is his ultimate ability. And I'll go over why that is once we get there. Um, so, Mana Barrier, I'll talk about his passive first. It's pretty good early game. It's like a. I would say it's a worse version of Malphite passive because uh, it has a cooldown and like Malphite's passive 
Um, comes back a little quicker, and it's based off your HP. But this gives you maybe, I think you have, I don't know, what's your base mana? Probably like 500, 460 or something like that. So it's a pretty good shield. It's remaining mana is a key point too, and it's about a minute, 10 second cooldown. Um, so you want to usually, you can win trades really early at 1-2 um, and tank things more than people would expect, especially with Aftershock, which usually you take on Blitzcrank, because you're just even more tankier here, because he has enough damage already. And you can hold him in place for Aftershock with your Power Fist, so... Um, Generally speaking, his mana barrier is just kind of a little helpful, a little early game tool just to help you out. So that's not bad. It just makes you a little tankier. Not a bad passive, uh, not too influential, but you know, it's just a passive. It's nothing crazy like Yasuo's double crit, but definitely gets the job done. Um, it's not as bad as like Renekton not having one or something like that. So uh, pretty good. Uh, let's go over his really like bad abilities. So his W is a speed up. And it also increases your attack speed. This is okay for taking towers and stuff, and also catching up to people and going for hooks. Um, and running at people for power fist is also good too. Uh, a big note is it is a self um, CC, so you actually slow yourself after you're done with it. So using this escape is not always the best and correct method, especially if you have mobility boots. You might as well just let those kick in rather than trying to outrun with a W. Now if you need to outrun really quickly, this will help and mainly there for repositioning and going for hooks and trying to catch people out. Uh, it's like a little mini righteous glory and then you kind of like slow yourself. So uh, the attack speed thing's not that helpful, but like I said, it can help with like power fist or maybe taking turrets. So again, not that good of ability. It's a pretty shitty steroid, but for what Blitzcrank needs to do, it, it's pretty okay. It used to speed you up and never slow you down. Um, that was back in the good old days, but uh, yeah, I'll compare these abilities. His E and his W remind me a lot like Pantheon's um, W. And I'll explain what that means once I get to his E. So his E is his Power Fist. Uh, his E is basically, it's an auto attack reset is a thing to keep in mind. So you can actually auto then E. So you can get two autos really quickly like that. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. It is very good. And usually you want to do this after you pull or you can silence then do this. It depends. Um, but usually this is the combo you do. You have Power Fist ready. Oh, you can also Power Fist, run up, get the guaranteed Power Fist on somebody who doesn't have a good escape, and maybe they'll try to dodge your hook or something and flash after, and then you can hook after. Uh, that's a good combo to do. Um, you don't always have to like hook first and go for the Miraculous Hook. That's another thing most people try to do on Blitzcrank. Um, sometimes just running up and Power Fisting, it's the same as Thrash. Sometimes just running up and flaying or walking up and flaying is the correct choice. You might take more damage, but that's why you have Mana Shield and you're a little tankier with Aftershock, because you'll get Aftershock proc after your Power Fist. And it also does pretty decent damage at level 1. I think it like doubles your attack damage, so that's pretty good. Um, late game it's like negligible, but in lane, you can actually trade decently well with it. It's not too bad. Now what I hate about this ability, um, and W, is Blitzcrank really sucks in terms of like scaling. Like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna say it like this. Late game, he's still a good champion. It's really strange. Like he can like single-handedly still win you the game late game. Now granted, people are more teamed up and it's harder to get that miracle hook, but you can still get a good hook and play around Vision. Like, late game, I'm never going to say Blitzcrank is, like, the worst. Obviously, some other supports do different things in fights, but if you're not, like, catching somebody out, Blitzcrank in team fights is a little meh. But the thing about Blitzcrank that I really dislike the most is they really fucked with his W and E in terms of trying to level them and doing anything with them. Leveling your W and E, you could leave these both at, like, one point, and, like, it wouldn't even matter. Uh, when you level up E, it does not boost its damage. It actually just lowers its cooldown. So that's really fucking annoying. Like, this thing scales off your attack damage. So no matter what, Blitzcrank never gets more damage. I wish this actually did some auto damage, but I think it would be broken, and you might have to balance Blitzcrank's damage around that. But I don't like the fact that it has actually no scaling besides a, a cooldown reduction when you level it. So you probably want to level your W second, even though you get this down like you get this down like a second per level. It's like really stupid. That's all it is. So when you're leveling this, it's not like you're getting like more damage. No. You're really not. You're just getting it at a, more, a lower cooldown. Which I compare it to Pantheon's W, where Pantheon's W literally goes from like 50 magic damage on Pantheon to like 100 magic damage on Pantheon at level 2. Like, leveling his W is like fucking worthless. And I compare it to Blitzcrank's the same way. I really hate how Blitzcrank basically only has two abilities in terms of like interactive gameplay. I wish these did more. Granted, your Q is so... like. 
let's just get to it right now. His Q is so overloaded that all of his other abilities are really boring. And, like, granted, like I said, this is his ultimate. We're going to word it like that. All of these other abilities are kind of boring to use. So it's, like, really frustrating. Um, and I wish these had a little more interaction between them or something else you could do with his W and E. But, again, you would have to rebalance his kit around that. So I don't know how comfortable I would be. But Blitzkang is a really old champion. And essentially, you have two abilities that are kind of, like, worth anything. And his other ones... Like, I'm not going to say these are bad abilities. They're, they're good. They, they do what you need to do. You CC people longer after you hook them or... You can do something in fights, but like you're literally just walking up and punching people in fights. Like you hook somebody like in a fight, and then that's all you do. Um, it's like old Alistair's problem when he would like W. Okay, he would like headbutt Paul Vin, and he would just be like walking around like this, like ooh, look at me, I'm team fighting. So they made him have like a stun on his E, and he can auto now. So something like that, a quality of life I would really like towards Blitzcrank. I don't think he's like particularly weak or anything. I just wish there was something else you could do in the meantime so just a thought process on his w and e um being really boring abilities that only enhance your q basically and uh yeah i wish they had something else to do like when you e somebody or something like that the next um i don't know when you like q them or something it'll, like does more damage or they'll be hooked further or something like that i don't fucking know i i you could do so many things and i'm not a balanced designer so um if I had more time, I'd rewrite something up, but this is just me going over his abilities right now. I'll think of something eventually, but right now I'm just going over what's going on. Um, his ult, like I mentioned before, has a passive and an active. His active at like base rank does like... I wish they had the numbers in here, but... Um, this is not a strong silence, by the way. It is an AoE silence, yeah, but it's 0.5, so you might be able to stop channels with it more than anything, and maybe like fuck up with people's timings on stuff like they might like try to shield and then they'll get the shield a little lower but for the most part the silence is there to neutralize and have burst rather than actually like oh my god like Cho'Gath silence this guy can't do anything or he can't do like all of his moves no it's you get an AoE silence which is really good but at the same time it's more for the burst damage and um stopping channels and if anything and stopping like escapes right away um so you can get like a power fist off or something like that or more CC just barely. It's like a 0.5 seconds. Remember, it has an active too. The active is when you shoot electricity out. Um, and his passive is when there's lightning bolts just stealing all your minion kills. And ADCs will complain about it. But you can get target stacks with them. So that's really nice. But it does like... His uh, passive with the lightning bolt actually does like 150 damage if you're just walking around. And I don't know if it technically prioritizes champions. But it's something to keep in mind when you're in 1v1s or something like that. Sometimes it's not the correct move to ult. Sometimes it's better to just have lightning draining from the skies right here. Draining. I don't even know why I use that word. But either way, um, just the thought process. It's just a more burst. Blitzcrank's a, lot, a pretty br good burst uh, support. He's got probably the most damage for a tank. Um, comparable with maybe... Um, Leona, but I think Blitzcrank does a lot of damage, and uh, Leona will li Leona relies a little more on consuming marks at the correct time, her like sunshine marks, rather than Blitzcrank being able to do it all by himself. So that's a little more helpful. Uh, but it's like they essentially do just a lot of damage for tanks, uh, more than you'd expect, especially with aftershock, like I said. So. Uh, like I said, at level 1, probably like, two. Th I think it's like 250 damage burst AoE to both the support and the uh, uh, ADC. Because it's a pretty wide range. Chances are you'll help both. And um, you might upset their shields or something like that. I don't really know. And like you can silence Janna is, is a big one or something like that. Or Karthus if you're really fucking messing with Karthus or something like that. But you can definitely just upset channels, which is really good. Something to keep in mind. Alright, let's go over his ultimate real quick, and then uh, we'll try to get in the game as quick as I can. Uh, his ultimate is uh, Rocket Grab. This is everybody what everybody fears about Blitzcrank. It's uh, probably one of the best repositioning tools, offensive repositioning tools in the entire game. Uh, probably the most game-breaking one. Um, it's real good. Uh, you can hook people over walls. You can hook people out of jumps. You can hook just about anything. Just... It's basically like you're going fishing. And all their Threshes, I think, get some more... Um, Threshes and Nautiluses both have more... I don't want to say kill power. They have more flexibility in what they can do with them. So, like, Threshes, like, CCs them. And, like, you have options to go in whether or not. And Blitzcrank 
the guys in there whether or not you want them in there. So uh, Blitzcrank also does more damage than both of those two. Uh, something to keep in mind. Uh, Blitzcrank does more damage than both of those guys. So uh, that's pretty good. And uh, Blitzcrank, you can also in team fights hook tanks off your ADC or something like that. So like his peel is actually really underrated. If you're near your ADC, you can silence the tank or pump, knock him up, and then like hook him towards you and kind of like randuins him or something like that, or have um, Starks or it's not Starks anymore. It's Zeke's Herald or Zeke's Convergence. You can kind of slow him in your slow field. I really like that because Blitzcrank's ult is really short cooldown, and you get like an ice field around you. Um, and it's AOE, so it's really easy to proc, and you can slow people down in that, like a randuins or something like that. So his PO is actually really underrated. That's why people... I, I don't understand when people say, like, Blitz can like the worst team fighting support in the game. I, I don't agree with that. He's not great, but he definitely has options. Uh, generally speaking, you're using your hook more offensively rather than defensively, but you can definitely make some plays with your hook. Um, that is not to be underestimated, and hopefully I can share those, because uh, if you're not hitting hooks, you basically should be playing a different champion. Uh... That's the big problem with Blitzcrank. Um, he has like one ability, and if you're not hitting it, you might as well be playing something else. But if you are hitting it, you're pretty much winning your team the game. So he's a pretty all-or-nothing champion. Much more aggressive than I'd say Thresh is. Thresh can be way more defensive, but Blitzcrank's all about offense and getting those offensive hooks, getting those uh, picks. Uh, most people what I recognize with Blitzcrank that they do wrong is they don't play around Vision. So like you can actually just Pink Ward stuff or Red Trinket stuff and... Um, there's two key things I would say. You play around vision and wait for hooks and stuff like that and play around like people clearing wards or people, um, especially people going for wards or people like walking in paths, just like trying to get to specific areas, like trying to like head back top and you can like hook them over a wall or something like that. Um, so you play around vision isn't what I would recommend is what most people don't um, do on Blitzcrank or other hook champions, especially. Uh, and the other one is save your ability hook for abilities if like there's time for desperation hooks but there's also time for you can just run run at them silence them and like team fight that way you don't have to get the miracle hook every single time you can just run up power fist or run up alt and then like wait for them to jump or wait for them to flash they'll burn their escape or whatever and then you jump them and then you hook them or something like that and that really helps in ganks can't tell you how many times that's happened in a gank where you like walk up in power fist um sometimes you don't have to hook the hook you can bait out like a flash or something like that if you're confident in your abilities so yes bullets Crank's ability is his bread and butter ability and all of his kit is overloaded into his queue is that true a hundred percent of the way it can get down to like seven or eight seconds at 45 percent cdr which you're trying to go for because you should be just basically throwing out hooks 24 7 um there are times where you don't want to throw out a hook. Sometimes it's better to save your hook than throw out a hook that's going to miss. Because having your hook up um, is basically a zone control. You walk around and they can't enter the zone without being in danger. So if you throw out your hook, then the enemy lane can press up and poke you or do damage. And ADC doesn't give a shit about you. So like a Blitzcrank without hook, they can aggress on. So that's something to keep in mind. I would definitely be aware of that. Don't just throw out your hook willy-nilly. A, it costs a lot of mana. B, um you lose a fuckload of pressure if you will miss a hook. So don't do that just all of the time, unless you're really like hitting them. But even then, uh, sometimes hooking a support or something like that will use you to fight Alistair, Leona, Tarek, uh, all that jazz. So just keep that in mind that um, Blitzcrank always should not just be hooking either. Like that, I, I know that's all he does, but there are times where it's bad. And uh, I'll try to point that out during the game, especially if we're going against a really tanky comp. And I pick into it because I'm going to pick Blitzcrank no matter what. So we'll see. Um, let's go over some champions real quick and then I'll try to jump in the game as quick as I can in terms of like lane matchups. Uh, generally speaking, um, I'll try to go over ADCs that I hate versing as Blitzcrank the most. Uh, that's very easy for me. Uh, a good Tristana, I'd word it, because Tristana can actually cancel your jump with her um, W if she's good enough. Usually at this elo, they don't, and you can punch them out of her rocket jump or hook them out of it. Um, I rarely see Tristana's actually buffer my moves with that, so I'm not really worried about Trist, but something to keep in mind, if they're good, they can be really annoying. Uh, Zaya uh, has a, a way to dodge it, but not too much of a problem other than that. Um, basically, you have to worry about Sivir, Ezreal, and a good Tristana. Uh, Lucian, if he's good, will dodge your hook too, but um, you can kind of wait until, or like Vayne can like tumble or something like that, but um, for the most part, 
hopefully you can kind of burn those abilities on something else, or if you're good enough that you can get around those, but anybody who can just counterplay your hook, uh, namely Sivir, who can just spell shield it if she's, you know, on top of her game, or Ezreal actually can just cancel it much easier than Tristana can. I see that more much more often. They're really frustrating to play against, and you'll see people try to pick Ezreal or Sivir into your uh, shit all the time if they haven't picked their ADC. Uh, ADCs that I really like going against, and like, oh my god, this is a great bullet count game. Uh, definitely Jinx. Jinx, you can fuck up really badly. Um, probably one of my favorite ADCs in the game to go against is Blitzcrank. Varus is another one. Uh, as you can see, like Ash or something like that. People who just have like no escape. Uh, Kog'Maw is a little the same way, um, but running out of Kog'Maw is <laughs> at least a little better than it used to be. But um, generally speaking, um, ADCs without escapes, like even MF, you can cancel alt and stuff like that. Which is really good uh, for late game team fights. You have many ways to cancel channeled ults. So you're really good against people who channel ultimates. Uh, Katarina, uh, you're really good against MF. Um, Karthus, like I said, you can do all right against. Karthus, once he's on top of you, though, you're fucked. But basically, people you can kind of like shut down. Uh, Velkaz is another one. So these are like people who have like their, their things hold them in place or they're channeling or doing something crazy. Uh, you want to go against. Um, you, when you're picking Blitzcrank, it's not just about the ADC and support matchup. You have to really consider what the top and jungle are, as well as mid. So if it's like a mid, like Vel'Koz, like I said, or um, Lux, or TF, or Brand, or something like that, a stand still, still mid that wants the wave clear, very good, because you can just kill wave clearing mids real easily. Um, so that's very nice. It's very nice engage. It's unreliable, on, unlike, say, um, what's a reliable engage? I'll say, like, uh, Alistair or something like that, even though Alistair's pretty good. Or um, Gragas. Stuff like that. Jarvan, like, it's much more reliable, but Blitzcrank can s search for hooks, and as long as you're not like, hooking in their tank, you're probably okay. But just keep in mind your top lane and their jungle. Hopefully they're not as tanky, or hopefully they don't have engagers. So, like, if I hook in... If I hook in Malphite, my team's not just gonna get ulted immediately, or a Moomoo, or something like that. Um... Uh, myth, uh, myth is hooking the tank is always bad. That is incorrect. Uh, sometimes hooking the tank when he's not ready or not surrounded by any of his teammates, you can burst down or get him before uh, he has like his cooldowns up or something like that. Like Jarvan, if you hook him when his EQ is not up, like, like he's still fucked. Like, so something to keep in mind: hooking tanks is not always a bad thing. Uh, that's a very big myth, actually. Now, granted, it can lose you fights, but it's a it's a myth, I'd say. Um, Let's go over supports I don't like versing in lane uh, next. Uh, that would be easily Alistair, uh, probably his number one. Uh, if you hook him, you'll just get pulled. He can draw out lanes really easily, or he'll headbutt your ADC away or something like that and just headbutt both of you. Uh, not great. Uh, Tom Kench can also somewhat reach the ADC if you hook uh, that, but you can hook both of them back at the same time so he's not much of a problem. Tarek's the same way. Um, you gotta burst him before he gets his ult off or something like that. But he can also just clobber you. Like if you hook him in, he can actually hit both of you with like a stun and then just start wailing on you with his mace. Uh, Leon is the same way. If you hook him in, sometimes he'll just go in on you. So it's like more like situational, which is why I don't like him as much as opposed to say playing against um, Morgana is really frustrating too. But usually the Morganas you can bait out the spell shield hopefully. So and they're not quick enough. Uh, that's that specific elos though. Um, Supports that I really like going against, uh, your Janna's, uh, Lulu, it's okay until up until 6, where it becomes a little more difficult. Um, uh, basically tank supports like Sona, or not tank supports, basically like, um, uh, shield supports, Sona's, uh, <laughs> Zillions if you, <laughs> versus Zillion main somehow, and then, uh, Karma's and stuff like that, so, um. Definitely much easier to get the hooks off on them, even though they have speed boost and stuff like that. But you can kill them and like one shot them. Uh, Lux supports same way. So just getting squishier supports is really nice. Now, if you miss on like a mage support like Brand, you'll just get turned on. But uh, so that way, I like champions that have high burst to go with you um, or have CC. Uh, so um, Ezreal actually surprisingly is a really fun champion to play with as uh, Blitzcrank because you can isolate them and then like poke them and. Ezreal can chase him all the way down the lane. Vayne's the same way. You can like pin him against the wall after you do it. Draven does damage, and he can also see people. Um, basically, any support I'd say works with Blitzcrank. Uh, I don't like Vayne early, but like I said, Vayne can get, you know, once Vayne gets a couple items, she's okay. Um, yeah, you can 
Finningo have any ADC, you're probably okay. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Where you're like, oh my god, my ADC is playing like Kogma. I can't pick Blitzcrank. Nah, it's not necessarily the case. It depends on the team comp, but uh, just keep that in mind. So that's kind of the matchups we got going here. Just try to avoid Sivir, Ezreal if you can. It's not impossible, but it makes it a little more difficult. And then Alistair, um, Leona are probably the number two, the two guys I don't like versing the most. And then like you got like a Moomoo's and stuff like. A Moo Moo and uh, who else would be bad? Like Lissandra can like alt herself too, so you have to keep that in mind. Like or Vlad can just like pull under your entire fucking team. Like you have, it's not just like hooking carries or something like that. You have to keep in mind. Kennen can just fucking alt immediately. Now you can get get him and maybe jump him, but sometimes your team's just not ready. So sometimes it's not the correct move, uh, even though you're hooking a carry in. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'll try to explain it more once we're getting in the game. Um, so let's get in the game. I should have. I wish there was like a way I could skip ahead to this, and then hopefully I can talk about the comp as it rounds itself out, as well I can talk about my masteries. I already kind of alluded to it that I go aftershock. Uh, there's a reason why I go aftershock because it builds your resistances when you walk up and punch people, and Blitzkank already does enough damage. He doesn't need to do like anything crazy um, to get damage uh, ratios out or anything. So uh, should I do items? I guess I could do items. I can kind of talk about that more in game. Basically, your general t um, tanky items, maybe like a locket. Uh, Frozen Heart's actually not bad on Blitzcrank. It synergizes with his passive and gives you more mana. Um, like I said, uh, Zeke's Convergence is always, I think, is really underrated on Blitzcrank because you can proc your ultimate. Probably one of the best users of it and slow people around. Adds more CC to you. Uh, Randoans, you pretty much will always want Mobies because it gives you more threat in lane and you can roam and like gank other lanes. This is good. I'll get the be last pick and kind of gauge and explain what the team comp is going to be like when I pick Blitzcrank. Uh, what else do I have on Aftershock page? Uh, I usually ban Katarina or um, Gangplank. Uh, somebody already got her, but I just don't want Katarina roaming on me. Really frustrating shit that I don't want to deal with, so pretty nice. Uh, as I said, Aftershock's already good. Fawn of Life because you impair people all the time. Uh, this I'm not sure of. You can go just flat armor. And boost your consumables. Maybe I should just do that instead, but. I don't know. I think it's a little better. Overgrowth's pretty good. And I get biscuits, and I want cosmic insight. Because you get some spell, summoner spell increase. And you don't need the boots. I mean, the boots one's not bad, but you can get like anything. Anything in the inspiration tree is pretty good. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, as opposed to their team right now, they have two like ADC characters, so so far they haven't like gotten a tank, and hooking people out of uh, Kindred's ult is definitely a thing that you can do. Uh, so far we don't have that much meat on our bone, which is uh, Teemo so far. I don't think we're going oh, okay, we have a Moomoo too. So we have more catch potential, sometimes I can just let him engage and then follow up with that, or hook somebody and then he goes in after me, yada yada yada. So, but right now we have good hook options, which is good when you're like seeing this kind of stuff. Uh, I, I probably should move my camera. There we go. So you see Zaya and Kindred um, already kind of locked in. Uh, that's very good. And we already have a Draven uh, ADC. So hopefully they pick somebody. Thresh is hit or miss. Depends how good the Thresh is, honestly, because he can like lantern people out of your hook after you're done with it, or he can aggress on you before you're ready or yada yada yada. It depends how good the Thresh is, I'd say. But you can also hook him and fuck him. Because Threshes aren't that tanky. They're okay. Um, but you can definitely fuck Threshes more than they can... Uh, more than you'd expect. And people who have CC that have long range C uh, CC that set you up is really good. Like TF can gold card people and then I can follow up. So his is targeted so I probably should wait for him to CC people and then hook them right after. That's a very good combo right there. Targeted CC with Blitzcrank is really good. Uh, so far, they don't have anybody I'm like, oh man, I really can't hook him. And then they have Velkaz mid, so I can also silence him out of his ult. I can hook him out of his ult. I can knock him up out of his ult. Hopefully, I can just get on top of him. I can flash on him whatnot. Uh, he's probably the guy I go for the most. So um, Their team comp is like pretty good for Blitzcrank. Like, they don't have much peel, and they don't have many dashes. So um, this is a pretty good comp for me to go against. And like I said, we have good CC and lockdown ourselves. So... Uh, that's very good. And our damage is pretty good as well. Our team comp, I think, is just better than theirs. 
Now, if they get, like, ahead, then they can, like, out-damage us, but they don't have a really good way of starting fights either. So it's going to be iffy, in my opinion, for them starting fights and them doing, like, any anything, unless, like, Thresh lands a hook or uh, we get caught out. Which, since this is plat, I'm like, fully expecting this to happen. Uh, also, Zaya has a like, knight. Which is something to keep in mind. I mean, she has no heal, so if we all win her, she'll we'll win. Even though that guy has exhaust. But exhaust doesn't really mind. Draven doesn't... The exhaust like doesn't fuck over Draven that much. Because he can play around it. And she can't heal out of it. If I hook Zaya, she should be dead early game. Uh... Like I said, follow up CC is really nice. Uh, Teemo shrooms like allow me to catch up the people, like just stuff like that. Basically, anything that makes Blitzcrank's life easier at like hooking people. Uh, Teemo shrooms also like allow me to scout, and it makes it dangerous for them to walk around again. That kind of vision thing. So just something to keep in mind. Excuse me. Uh, well, I would prefer to try to get a really early um, level in terms of like invade if I can. Uh, Try to get like an invade in just so I can maybe burn a summoner spell early or something like that. Uh, it's a good thing, it's a good habit to do, and people stack the bush. Uh, usually they stack against Blitzcrank, so you have to keep that in mind so you just don't run face first and die instantly. Uh, that wouldn't be the greatest. So <laughs> I'll try not to do that. Usually you want to enter from a different, you don't want to be like predictive or predictive, uh, predictable when you're going in for an invade. So I hope I can kind of do that. This is plat 5 elo, so I don't expect much. Um, just keep in mind, if people do dumb shit, then it's going to be uh, boring gameplay, I guess. But we're going to do our best, and I'll try to walk you through like what I'm thinking and stuff. Uh, like I said, no one on their team, I'm like, oh my god, if I hook them, like we're going to fucking lose. Um, no, nah, hooking anybody on their team is pretty good, no matter what the circumstance. Even Thresh. Um, so let's try to walk forward and see if I can convince my team that, hey, maybe we can kind of just take a look around, take a gander. Take a walk on the wild side, you know? Draven noticed the ignite, too, so that's very good. He's not going to be like, why does she have ignite? I died to that shit. What the fuck? Uh, so I'm going to walk down instead of walking, like, I, like I said, I'm going to walk down through the river bush instead of walking. We have TF and Blitzcrank. I'm going to walk through here. Because they might stack this bush right here, and that's really dangerous. So I'm just going to walk up, and uh, we're going to take TF and uh, Blitzcrank and see if we can make anything happen with it. Uh, 30 seconds. Might as well just like walk up and see if we can get anything. We don't have everybody here, but like, why not? Uh, I didn't even flash. Uh, so she's dead. I burned my flash, but we get first blood off the table. Uh, burning a flash for like her flash would have been really good. So I just did it, and I didn't even have to ignite. I don't know who the fuck ignited. I should have given it the TF. I was kind of just autoing. I think my aftershock actually took it. But stuff like that, like people just don't pay attention. So like Thresh was like, "Oh my god!" Like I gotta get the fuck out of here. But Kindred was like really late on that. And it was debatable whether or not I needed the flash, but if I flash, I guarantee her either burning a flash or uh, her dying. If I just like hook, then she could just flash and not do anything. So I didn't want to do that. She's getting no help at all. The flash shouldn't matter to me though. Like I said, if I'm getting hooked, I, I probably fucked up somewhere wrong. Uh, somewhere. Uh, and you can check Thresh on like what ability he got first. He got Flay, so you can see his passive right there. Something to keep in mind. Sometimes people will, like cheese with hooks. I've seen that happen plenty of times. Uh, I wish he killed that minion there. See if Targon's. He has coin too, so we're gonna have the shove advantage as well. Uh, so that means like once he gets this minion, you can go for this, and you level that up, and you fucking just fuck him up. He has no heal, so that's gonna kill him, and uh, that's really easy. Like it's. He didn't flash my hook, and he didn't respect me at all ending at level 2. Um, like I said, no heal basically confirms that kill, so pretty easy game so far. But straightforward stuff. You can power fist right after an auto, or uh, level up your ability like a scrub like I do. So um, Their team seems to be already not doing too great, but 
Uh, let's, let's, let's talk about some ways you can get some like really gimmicky hooks. You can also target stack and break a minion and then hook right after, or like wait till the minion health is really low. Uh, also, watching your own minion health is really important to see if they're going to stand still for an, like an auto attack or something like that. Um, so like Zaya, you can notice she's like standing still when she autos, so it makes it much easier to go for hooks if you know she's going to go for this one or something like that. Uh, so something to keep in mind. Like it's not all about just like, okay. Um, I also power fist the minion there. It didn't power fist her automatically. We got her flash, so um, I'm pretty sure Kindred was like right here. Uh, but Draven cleared aside the minion, so I had a shot through the minions, and that's another like gimmicky trick you can kind of do. Like a lot of the time, people don't expect when you can kind of weave it just like through here, like this crack right here. People can you can grab that, and this goes a little further than the the indicator shows. So like you can catch people off guard because they don't expect like hey. Brits, Blitzcrank can, you know, grab this. So, um, like I said, you can kind of use your W in lane to kind of speed up and get up in that ass a little quicker. I expect, fully expect uh, Kindred to be on this side of the map because her mark's over here. Uh, she's going to head down towards here, towards this river, and try to collect this mark, I assume. Um, it's pretty obvious. You can kind of follow Kindred's around. So, uh, hopefully we can kind of, like, all in this guy. I'm going to go for one right here. And like I said, I have a passive right now. I have my mana barrier still. Um, you W closer and then just make this game really easy. And then I can just walk up and die. Like, she's going to die. I still have my passive still. So she, yeah. She fucked up. She doesn't realize we still have heal, so. I, I, I really don't get people sometimes. Like, they fuck up. And, uh... This, I'm trying to showcase as much as I can. Uh, so we can go back and spend a lot of gold. Uh, this guy's questioning why Mummy took the kill when he just wanted an assist, I assume. Or more gold share. I don't blame him, and Draven already cashed in, so like, whatever. I'd rather my Mummy get really tanky, so. Uh, I could have just gotten... Uh, I could have just gotten Moby Boots uh, straight up, but I want to try to just wait. And I'll be able to get back the lane fast enough. I have a lot of gold. More gold than I probably should at this moment. Normally I'd have to talk about other items I can get, like Righteous Goy or Knight's Vow is really good. Anything with CDR is very good for Blitz. Like all of these options I'd, I'd, I'd say are pretty good. Um, you can get a Locket, which is in, in here as well. Uh, note that if he says like, hey, Velkaz has no Flash, that's another lane I can gank after this bot lane recalls. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Threshes will come up in about maybe 40 seconds, I think. So, uh, it's not very often. It's not very quick. Like, I could still go like this and just fuck him up. Now, you want to power fist this guy instead of, like, actually just hooking him. And then, like, wait until see if he, uh, does anything. But, um, he really can't, but you never know. Maybe, uh, he'll get, like, a random flash or something like that. So what you want to do in the meantime is, since I can't really do anything right now, uh, I can maybe check and see if I can roam anywhere or see if, uh, Kindred's like just snooping around her jungle, clear this plant, which is very good. Uh, I could try to hook, go for like a hook under tower, which they've seen to kind of just walk into him. Um, maybe that's the better, best option I could have done, but basically trying to clear plants or like warding deep in their jungle is very good. So, uh, stuff to keep in mind. Draven, once he gets ult, probably will just like launch it at her. Uh, I could also flash hook her under turret. Um, she has no flash, so. But you just want to be a, a nuisance as uh, puts crank. So I'm gonna roam mid right here. Um, has been slain. This guy's pretty low. Uh, let's see if we can grab him with the Mumu's help. I have flash, and this guy has no flash, so he should be dead. And he used all of his abilities. Yeah, so he's dead. And you don't want to burn hook if you don't have to, because. A, I don't want to take that kill. I'd rather Mumu get tanky or something like that. And, uh... Yeah. I don't agree with this. Good thing he didn't auto him. Uh, but they fucked up. Uh, again. They fucked up really bad. Um... I could probably kill that guy with like flash hooking him. Draven has two axes, something to keep note of. 
Uh, we're destroying this lane. Uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. I mean, like, I haven't had to do anything. And remember, I'm good at taking towers because I had an auto reset and stuff like that. Notice where the jungler is and she's dying, so... Um, usually that's not the best. You don't want to be dying as a jungler. So I'm going to go back mid again. I have a uh, warding trinket right here that I can clear this guy with. Uh, I can just fuck up Vel'Koz again. He's going to play really aggro because you saw in chat he was really confident in his abilities to do anything. So I can just fuck him over. So I'm going to walk up like this. Kind of go behind him. Uh, hopefully if he uses his fucking thing I can just uh, fuck him up. Okay, well I didn't think he was just going to walk in and die. Uh, I'm not too disappointed. Like I, I burn his barrier, and uh, that's good, I guess. But TF kind of walked in and just—I didn't think TF was just gonna walk into his stuff and just uh, eat it. But whatever, we got an ocean Drake. All oh, the hooks. It's a pretty straightforward game. Uh, you look on your team and Vel'Koz seems to be the only one who's doing anything noticeable at all. <laughs> uh, I try to get early CDR and mana if you can and try to get a pink as well. Uh, maybe even two pinks just so you can get play around. Like I said, play around vision. So I've had one where you just pink like this bush or this bush or like these side bushes and you just pink around there and you can just sit on them and like wait for people to like overextend. Uh, very good stuff. Uh, in all honesty. Now, Draven and me are like rotating and we're trying to like push in top. Uh, I think it would be better if TF actually roamed and we just went mid uh, and TF went bottom or something like that. But uh, my job is going to be essentially the same thing to kind of clear vision and also make it so when I push up that I'm not getting like jumped by like everybody in the game. Uh, just clear plants. Basically, clear anything that'd be a nuisance for me to deal with. And since Urgot's. I was going to say, Urgot's probably going to build MR because he's versing Teemo. Uh, we're going to be able to do some damage against him. My ult at level 1 active is 250. And yeah, that's a lot of damage at level 1 uh, for an ultimate. And you notice we have, I'm like a tanky support. Like, this guy has 1,000 HP and he's got two BFs. Uh, I don't know if I agree with this build, but... Do so you want to hook right after and... Uh, So see how I saved. So, so see how I save my hook until like it's it's a it's a really weird thing. Like your hook, most people don't like treat it as like a, a stun. It is a stun. It is a close range stun to people. So you can like like it. Most people are like, oh my god, like I have to hook people from far away. No, no, you just hook people and like stun them in place. And since Kindred was going for like the final auto right right there, then. Uh, that's why uh, you did it at that exact moment. And I kind of like looked like I was going to back off, but I was debating whether or not to hook, try to hook Kindred out of there or not. And I silenced Thresh so he couldn't hook right after he played. At least I tried. That was the goal. And I'm going to hook over this wall, see if anybody comes to try to contest this. We should be alright. Yeah, our team's kind of stopping him. I almost got like 100% kill participation too. There's no way this Valkos stays, right? What a positive guy. Positive mental attitude right here. So, uh, my Draven's really strong. This is a time where I'm like, okay, get Knight's Vow and just like, help him out. Especially since the attack speed debuff like from Frozen Heart. Which, uh, Frozen Heart, I will get this game, but uh, won't, attack, uh, won't help right now. None of them have attack speed, so like, she's really out of the game. It's, they're, they're, they're most like underlevel people are uh, <laughs> their ADs surprisingly so Vel'Koz is probably doing the most damage so I'm just gonna follow this guy and ward around him so he doesn't get too gutsy uh, basically Thresh is gonna support just Vel'Koz which is really smart because he's the only one worth anything and then I'll try to hook him right here uh, you hook him out of his thing which is really good And if I was a little better, I would have been able to stun that guy, but she flashed. So like that kind you, you get what I'm saying. If I hooked, then it was debatable whether or not he would have been able to get away. Because uh, he would have taken damage uh, probably after I hooked. But she also flashed, so I couldn't like stun her. 
with my hook. So, that's what I was trying to do. I didn't have my knockup up because it does no extra damage. It's really frustrating. It's a frustrating ability. And then this gives you like good movement speed and stuff, but I mean it's good for killing wards, I guess. But like, no, you only get a cooldown reduction thing on it. You get like no extra damage or anything, so it's like pretty. Um, I mean, I wish there was like more that I could say in terms of like how you get hooks. Honestly, you run past your range and then with your W, and you'll be able to outrun it, and then you can go for the long range hook and try to back them in the corner. So like, obviously, you want to try to back them like in the air. So like, when they're running, they only have one option to run. Um, and most people think they're safe, like in a minion wave. You can actually hook their models through like minion waves and stuff. If people like don't focus you, like, so like this guy is done, like that guy's done, like that guy was focused on something else. Uh, this would have been really good if I had like a shield of some sort, but I don't have one. But yeah, like the kindred, like you can tell, like she was gonna just gonna stand in space or. She was gonna stand in her like own space and kind of like uh auto attack Draven. This guy like doesn't kite at all, or uses Qs or anything, so I gotta try to get back and run to a dragon fight as quick as I can. That's gonna be the goal. Uh, I want to try to get MR so I don't just die to Vel'Koz and I can run through his ult. Like with, with with a little bit of MR right now, I can just run through Vel'Koz ult and punch him if I can't like hook him or flash on him or something like that. Vel'Koz is definitely the most dangerous guy on the map against us, so uh, obviously Draven seems to be pretty bad, uh, but <sighs> Vel'Koz is probably the most dangerous and I have all of the tools to stop him. Probably more than Amumu does. And I do have flash up too, so that guy should never be able to get an ult off. Remember, save your thing for when people like use their like escapes. So TF has ult, you can just ult this guy. But he's being a little bitch. So they're gonna go for her. That's the safe kill right there. I can't complain about that. I would have risked it for the brisket though, because I'm crazy. Uh, remember, your ult cooldown is really short, so you can burn it on waves like that and all that jazz. Yada yada yada. Uh, we don't know who's in this bush right here, so it's. I'll just hook it, just to make sure no one's there. You don't want somebody, you know, fanatic death pushing you. That'd be a really sad way to go. Uh, remember, try to, if you can, like, if you can afford to, try to W and, like, run past the wave and then. Um, so you can get, like, hooks and stuff. Also, Kindred got sol soloed by their. Really weak guy. See, like he almost killed our dude. Like I have to keep that in mind. He's probably dead. He just got grinded. Now nah, I could have just fought there, but I I don't want to give up two kills and two sprees. So that wouldn't be the best. And you're like, wow, you left your ADC. Well, I did. Because I'm a scumbag. Yeah, he was getting, like, hooked. I couldn't block the hook and that. Maybe I could have, maybe I couldn't. But we would have just gotten grinded up by the, uh... We would have gotten grinded up by the Valkaz, mainly. Ah, uh, this is not that good of a hook, by the way. See, this is one of those times where I'm like, ah... Uh, is it a good hook? Who knows? I'm just gonna kill that guy. Is it worth? I don't really know. Alright, now we got his flash. I can worry about that when I get there. Your ult has a really large range. Look how like his his ult and like his base skin doesn't look like it hits that far, but it actually hits insanely far. 
This skin's a little more clear. But, like, that's another thing people don't realize about Blitzcrank. His ult goes really far. It's like a little mini... I think it's like as big as an Amumu ult, which most people don't realize that. I remember I said play around Vision, so theoretically I could go up to this bush and, like, wait in it. Um, maybe. I don't, I, I'm pretty sure they can see me if I go there, but... You know what I'm saying. You, you like, hide in bushes, use, like, red trinkets, pinks, and stuff. And, like, wait for them to walk around corners and... Like, oh, I'm gonna wave clear. I'm like, no, you're, you're just dead, dude. So, like, right here, I can just go, like, right here. And hook this Kindred. And, like, she, like... She doesn't even realize, like, what happened to her. Like... Most people are really careless around turrets. Um, then we're going to have enough to dive with um, Mummy right here. Um, hopefully. Yeah, they have a ward over here now, so like it's not going to work like as easily <laughs> at this time. So uh, This is a very bad turret for them to defend. We could technically dive with the movement really easily. Since What's-His-Face is really low. You can push him off turret with threatening with your hook, whether or not I throw the hook out or not. Oh, that was really close. I almost hit the Kindred slash the uh, one guy. They used both their defensive ultimates though, so like whatever. We have a huge lead this game. There's not much like really to what I'm doing. This is very snowball-y. Um, it's under 20 minutes already, and we're kind of just dominating them. Goodbye. Ah, this is a really bad fight for us now. Like, this just became dangerous. Now, I want to stand here in front of, like, this, this thrash right here. And then, uh, I'm gonna run away if I can. I think I'm gonna die, though. Uh, they can't really get Baron because I think they would die. Um, they can't get Baron because their base would die. This guy's he needs to be he needs to be more relaxed, dude. I'm just gonna get a righteous glory. I can end this game much quicker with that. Since all of their turrets are gone, there's no point in me like even trying to not like hide behind there. And I have enough armor that I can just tank turrets and stuff. And you could argue that I played like a, like a bitch and like I left my guy and maybe I could have killed Urgot. But giving up sprees like that is actually really bad. And even having an extra person up might just prevent Baron. So um, just keep that in mind. Sometimes it's not worth dying. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. Like at the beginning of that fight, I was trying to block as much skill shots as I could, but once the uh, fight turned, I gotta get that out of there. Preserve the KDA, as some would say. Now you can just ping Baron, then you ward up everywhere else. Make sure Kindred doesn't get it. This is another time hooking somebody in might not be the best course of action unless you can burst them, so just keep that in mind. Like, oh, Kindred's coming, I gotta hook her. Nah, then she could steal Baron, so that's not the wisest decision. So their base is so, like, shattered right now that we should be able to just kind of finish this game. But just walking up top, clearing that, and then, uh... As long as we stay within vision and stuff, we should be alright. So, I... Uh, I can't get that guy. But we can clear vision and I can just run up and uh, grab this. So, remember, I have Righteous Glory now, so... Um... Theoretically, if they engaged on us, that would've been really bad, but we're okay. That really went far. I have Flash, too, now, so... That was bad. TF getting hooked is bad. Silence this guy so he can't hook immediately, and then Righteous Glory, and then run in like a goon. Um, pretty much didn't do anything. And then I just, you know, tanked that ult. Even though I had Flash, I could've Flash, like, hooked, but it was down. Uh, that game was really snowball -y, but hey, that's Blitzcrank in a nutshell. <laughs> I think the pre-game was actually much, uh, I think the pre-game was actually much longer than the actual game itself. Who would have guessed? Um, yeah, you can stomp people as Blitzcrank, so just, uh, keep that in mind, I guess. Uh, you gotta honor, he's, he's, he, 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 uh, was leadership and strategy right there, obviously, so, uh.
Yeah. Essentially, that's it. <laughs> I mean, they're not going to be as easy. Uh, this is pretty easy elo, and uh, people walk into hooks and don't pay attention to level 1, but you get what I'm saying. Um, or for the most part. I might do another one like later that's not so stompy, hopefully, but for now, this will be like the stomp what's cranking, and this guy just you know, starts throwing insults towards his enemy. He's just like, man, these guys like really stupid, and like you're like, hmm. Yeah, I'm just gonna say ouch, like ouch, dude, ouch, ouch. Can't can't really uh, compete with that one. That was pretty good. So yeah, um, a lot of blitzcrank is just putting on. Uh, sometimes it's putting on a facade that you're stronger than you actually are too. So. Who knows? But that's uh, Blitzcrank. If you have any questions, please leave them in the chat. Or not chat. I guess I'm not streaming. But please leave them in the comments or anything else. And I know not many people are going to watch this, but it's just something I want to try to do more. It's just like little short vids like this, especially with people I know I can talk about for a really long time. And then I can refine them if it gets more attention and stuff. But uh, yeah, Blitzcrank Season 8, pretty good. Uh, you can play just about anybody now, so keep that in mind. Uh, you're pretty open for anything. So... Take care and uh, rock on. And uh, a rolling stone gathers no rust, is what Blitzcrank says. And the magic uh, it calls to me. So, also that. <laughs>